On September 18, 1999, Louisiana Tech traveled to Birmingham, Alabama to take on the Crimson Tide at Legion Field. Here, Tech is down by six, facing a fourth and long in the final seconds. But how did we get here? Let's take a look back. This game was the last time Alabama and Tech faced off, but the two teams actually met four times in the 1990s, in 92, 93, 97, and here in 1999. Bama walked away from both of those early 90s games with more points on the scoreboard, but had to forfeit the 1993 game because it was later found out that Alabama cornerback Antonio Langham had received improper benefits. But don't worry, I'm sure Missouri was also punished. So Tech now technically had a one-game winning streak, and Bama had to fix that. Realizing that Birmingham was actually further away than both Tech and Alabama than just Tuscaloosa, the 1997 game was played at Bryant-Denny Stadium. And, uh, yeah, Tim Rattay and co. took down Alabama on their homecoming. And now the Tech win streak was two. Granted, this 1997 Bantama team was not their best, finishing the season at 4-7, and seven, but that was under Mike DuBose's first year as head coach for the Tide. By year three, in 1999, DuBose had seemingly turned the Tide as convincing wins over Vanderbilt and Houston boosted Alabama's AP ranking from its preseason 20 spot to number 18 before inviting Louisiana Tech back to Birmingham. So that's where we were, 59 minutes and 51 game seconds before the beginning of this clip. After a handful of meetings in the past decade, Alabama and Tech had gotten to know each other pretty well, and a much improved Crimson Tide team was hoping to avenge a two-year-old loss to an underdog. But yet look at that scoreboard. Somehow Tech is only down six points. How did that happen? To find out, let's jump back to the beginning of the game. Tech actually jumps on top early, going up 6-0 thanks to a four-yard pass from Timur Tay to James Jordan. Then after Bama answers with a field goal, Timur Tay this time finds Sean Cangliosi for a 27-yard touchdown pass. And that 12-3 score holds until halftime. But real quick, you might be thinking, wait, I thought touchdowns were worth seven points. And you'd be right if you hit the extra point after the touchdown. After a block and then a miss, Kevin Pond, Tech's kicker, has failed to connect on either of his first two attempts. Pond battled injuries in both his seasons at Tech and missed six more extra points over the course of this season, with the next miss coming on a block the next week against Louisiana Lafayette. After this season was over, Pond left the program and Tech coach Jack McNell hoped one of the three kickers left on the roster would step up and be an improvement over Pond. The options were sophomore Ross Bernal, junior Trent Wyrick, and true freshman fresh on campus, Josh Scobie. It shouldn't be too hard to figure out who won out that battle. But for now, still in 1999, Tech's best option is Kevin Pond. And he helps rectify his earlier sins by knocking through a 42-yard field goal to start the second half scoring. So Tech's up 15-3 with only 27 minutes left in the game. What could possibly go wrong? So Tech's early lead was due to two things, Alabama's game planning and Tech forcing turnovers. Well, I mean, there's also Tim Rattay, but we'll talk about him later. This season, Alabama had Andrew Zhao under center, and in typical late 90s SEC quarterback fashion, Zhao was not the key to his offense. He only averaged about 20 attempts and 138 yards per game. But yet against Tech, he was underperforming even those low expectations. It took five passes before Zhao completed one. And even his first completion came with good and bad news. The good news, it was a 16 yard pass on third and 13 to bring the Crimson Tide just outside of the red zone. But the bad news, Shamari Buchanan fumbled the ball after coming down with the catch and Tech recovered. Well, I guess that's bad news if you're Alabama. And that was the last Alabama pass of the first quarter. The second quarter went slightly better, but the Crimson Tide passing game went into halftime with some not so great numbers. Simply put, the passing game wasn't working. A halftime adjustment had to be made. Maybe Bama should run the ball more? And really, that doesn't sound like a bad plan when your rushing attack is led by Sean Alexander. Long before receiving the 2005 NFL MVP with the Seattle Seahawks, Sean Alexander was Mr. Touchdown at Alabama. The year before this, Alexander finished with the third most rushing yards and most touchdowns in all of the SEC. And in 1999, in his senior campaign, 
he would be even better. He did fumble early on here at Legion Field, but he has been the only consistently good part of Alabama's offense. So when Tech goes up 15-3, it's time to find more ways to get him involved in this game. Alabama will make their run-heavy offense even more run-heavier. But for now, let's send Sean Alexander out there to return the kickoff and just see what happens. Yeah, turns out good players make good plays. And now it's time for Tech to start making those fatal errors. After the teams trade unsuccessful drives, Tech starts driving until a fumble gives the ball back to Bama. The Crimson Tide have some success at moving the ball down the field, but end up needing to punt. Three plays into Tech's subsequent drive, Rattay throws an interception, and Sean Alexander, and I guess the rest of the Alabama offense, doesn't look a gift horse in the mouth twice. That's the expression, right? Either way, one 30-yard run later, and Alabama has its first lead of the game. That score holds until Alabama tries that pesky passing thing again, and Zal throws the ball right into the hands of Tech's foster Bradbury. Three 10-ish yard Rattay passes later, and Tech is back on top. 22 to 18. But Bama wastes little time and drives down the field to regrab the lead. And again, by Bama, I really just mean Sean Alexander. Eventually, the Tide add a field goal after a nine play, four minute drive to give the Tim Rattay show one more chance to pull the upset. Two minutes, 36 seconds. Ball on your own 23 yard line, down by six. Let's go. And by go, I mean immediately throw three incomplete passes, bringing up fourth and 10. But then, miraculously, Tim Rattay finds James Jordan for a 25-yard completion to keep the game alive. But that good luck doesn't last long. After another incomplete pass, Tim Rattay is sacked, causing Tech to call the second timeout before a third and 22. This was the sixth time Rattay had been sacked tonight, and the collective pain is really starting to catch up with him. But the slight limp only serves to add fuel to the fire as Rattay connects with James Jordan and Sean Cangliosi for 26 and 22-yard receptions to bring up a first and 10 at the Alabama 16 with 45 seconds left. So let's jump three plays later for a moment. There's only nine seconds left, which isn't ideal, but this is still no problem for Tim Rat Wait, that's not a 13 jersey. Who even is number seven? After digging through the death chart, I figured out his name is Brian Stallworth, and he's the backup quarterback. You see, on that first down play, Tim Rattay dropped back to pass, but was pulled down by this very large man. Remember, Rattay had already started limping before the sack, and now with his right ankle fully sprained, he limped to the sideline and was put out on a stretcher headed for the locker room, and Tech had to burn their last time out. So really, with no time to get ready, Brian Stallworth was cast into the spotlight ahead of schedule. Okay, real quick tangent here. Stallworth wasn't just Tim Rattay's backup, he was seen as the starter in waiting. 1999 was Tim Rattay's senior season in Ruston, with Stallworth scheduled to take over to start the new millennia the next year. While he was the presumed starter, Stallworth stayed in Ruston over the offseason to work out with the team, and work out he did upping his bench press to 400 pounds, becoming the strongest player by pound on the roster. To give a little reference of how heavy 400 pounds is, it's about as heavy as a full-grown tiger. So in other words, Stallworth could bench press a fighting tiger just by himself. But unfortunately, a bench press doesn't strengthen your knees, as Stallworth tore his left MCL four games into that 2000 season and was out for the rest of the year. Stallworth's number two was Maxie Causey, yeah, Maxie Lambright's grandson, by the way, who took over in the second half for the injured Stallworth and played well enough to secure Tech's win. By the next week, Causey was given his first start of his collegiate career against Tulsa and it would be his last after a win about as bad as you could imagine. After that, Tech turned to a little old true freshman named Luke McCown, who went on to have a pretty decent career. And with McCown taking over before Brian Stallworth can recover from his injury, Stallworth knows he won't be starting in Rust in 2001. Understandably, Stallworth transfers to Central Arkansas, where he sets school records with 30 total touchdowns in a season and a 65.6% .6 completion percentage. From there, Stallworth heads to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at the CFL, where over two seasons, he throws two passes for zero yards and gains nine yards on the ground. Or maybe since it's Canada, it was nine meters. I'm not sure. But all of that is still a year or more away. Currently, McCown is just a high school senior in Jacksonville, Texas, trying to decide between Oklahoma, Florida State, or Louisiana Tech. Stallworth is still at Tech, and even though he's number two on the depth chart, He's thrust here into the spotlight to try to take over for a tech legend 
and re-dethrone Alabama. And so here, Stallworth's post-collegiate career hardly matters in this moment. What matters is what he does with this one chance. Well, really three chances, since Tim Rattay was sacked on a first down, and now it's fourth down, and four minus one equals three, I think. On Stallworth's first play under center at Legion Field, a Tech quarterback finds themselves pulled down in the backfield for the second play in a row, this time for a nine-yard sack. With no timeouts left and the clock ticking, Stallworth gets up and rushes back to the line. Now on third down, he finds Delwyn Dager. The result is only a four-yard gain on third and 26, but more importantly, Dager gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Delwyn Dager was arguably Tech's best receiver in 1999, but it's hard for anyone to replace Troy Edwards, who left after that historic 1998 season. But Dager is exactly who you expect to see a lot on this drive, trying to score with less than two minutes remaining. But at, until this four-yard reception on third down, he only had one target, a pass from Rattay that fell incomplete. So here on fourth down, you're almost guaranteed to see a Hail Mary pass. And if you were to guess who that Hail Mary may go to, Dager would not be that bad of a pick. And there he is, split out wide at the top of the screen, and on the same side of the field is Sean Cangliosi. Cangliosi, later the owner of the Smoothie King in Ruston, oddly enough, was the Bulldogs' red zone threat in 1999. The 6'3 receiver came down with 10 touchdowns over the course of the season, but this isn't the red zone. So here we are. After being up by as much as 12, Tech finds themselves down 6 to the eventual SEC champion. The quarterback dropping back to pass isn't the guy who received Heisman votes last year, it's the backup who had very little time to even warm up and yet is expected to throw a deep ball here. There's nine seconds left, but even that's overshadowed by the fourth and 22 that the Bulldogs face in this second. Can the Bulldogs tie it up and give Kevin Pond the chance to win the game after missing two extra points earlier tonight? Will Alabama fall to the same non-SEC team for the second time in three years? Let's find out. Of course, Kevin Pond would go on to make the extra point and send the Bulldogs back to Ruston with the upset victory. The Alabama coach Mike DeBose was booed off the field in Birmingham and fired the next year. Tech would go on to beat ULL, ULM, and UAB that season and become ranked for the first time in school history you know, before falling to USC in the last week of the season and being snubbed from a bowl game. Just normal tech things. 